Welcome back to Mars Horizon, folks. We are going to launch the Orbital EVA next month, and that is going to match at least the Russians, the Soviet Union. So it is a suboptimal launch window, so that makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, I don't like things that go boom, uh, but uh, we'll see. Crude moon landing research complete. One giant leap for mankind. The first astronaut to set foot upon another planet represents a monumental triumph of human ingenuity and daring. Those who achieve it will be immortalized by Earth's astounded populace. It's not another planet, though. It's a moon. But fair enough. I'm excited, too. Alright, suboptimal launch date. But still, 79% reliability for the launch, so um, I am uh, quietly confident, cautiously confident. It's raining. I'm less confident. I am less confident. It's not really, really heavy rain, though, so it's not terrible conditions, I think. But certainly bad. And the Gallant. Let's see. Bad conditions, man. 8% risk of blowing up. Let's not blow up, shall we? We are launching because we're not letting the Russians beat us to this. Come on, baby. Do a good job. Hit the tower. Go, 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 go. Looking good. Yeah, baby, yeah. All right. Ooh, and a very good launch indeed. Plus one data on the first task in mission. Nice. All right. And the Titan II got a bit more reliable. All right, Orbital EVA, September 1967. Achieve Earth orbit. Collect a bunch of stuff. 10 comms, 20 nav we need to collect. That's fine, we can do that. Let's do our usual manual data collection conduct experiments. And then we'll do a ground control connection. All right, confirm commands. <sighs> Dang it. Failure on the manual data collection. We'll resist it. All right, experiments went well. And so did the ground control connection. Nice. All right, we'll do the same one more time. Actually, I think we'll do a flight path control instead. It does cost us power, but instead of costing us comms, we get we get a comm, and also instead of getting five data, which we don't really need, we get two uh, nav and two data. So I think that's a better deal. And we'll do a ground control connection again. Confirm. Alright. Flight path control is good. And so is the ground control connection. Alright, we're way over on our uh, comms. And we're nowhere near, near with, um, with the nav. So I think we'll do... Two flyover course adjustments and a manual data collection. Or oh, what? No, no manual data collection. Our astronauts are going to sit this one out and instead do a ground control connection. All right, confirm. All right, flyover course adjustment is good. So is the second one. And we need to resist the ground control connection, unfortunately. Mm. We 
do we? Yes, we do. Assist. Because we need... It's the last turn. We need to recharge, and then we need to do this. To, and that actually takes us there. So we can recharge again. And that gives us our bonus reward. Confirm. It's a good thing that we could recharge. Alright, task complete. Conduct mission EVAs is our next task. Alright. And now here we have to contend with drift. Okay, so we have a window of minus two to plus two. Drift. And again, this is not... It doesn't have to be in there at the end of each turn. It just needs to be in there at the end of this task. So at the end of turn four, we need to be within min minus two and plus two. All right. We already have comps. Did that carry over from the last one? Because we had one too many in the last one. Might have. Okay. So, here we need data and not nav. Alright, we're gonna do that. Then we're going to do a flight path control and an infrared mapping. That takes us to 6 and 5 in turn 1. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. Alright. Comms were good. Flight path control is good. And the infrared mapping is good. So we're up to one drift now. We need to be careful of that. We need to be careful of that. Now, if we do a manual data collection... Then we can do a flight path control, and we can do an external sensor alignment. Which takes our drift back to zero, and we're almost there. So let's do that. Flight path control, good. And, ooh, almost. Uh, critical success, but it was a success, so that's good. Okay, now, we can do an infrared mapping. Uh, let's just remove this. So we're at zero now. We can do an infrared mapping. That gives us the data that we need. And then we can do a manual data collection, which gives us the comms that we need. And then we can recharge some power. We are within range for the drift. So, confirm. Alright, we'll resist that. And we'll accept that. And that's the mission. Oh, we have one more task. So it's not the mission. Uh, we need to perform a controlled re-entry. Where we'll have to deal, deal with heat. Okay. So, max keep heat below three, and we get one to three heat at the end of a, each turn. We're starting at one, so we need to bleed off a lot of heat. Let's start by doing a flyover course of judgment. That takes us down to zero. Then we'll do a flight path control and a ground control connection. That gets us off to a really good start, I think. 
Don't fail. Again. Damn it. Do better. Thank you. Those two fails took us way down on the power. We're up to two heat, so that means that we can now do the manual data collection. Get our heat down to zero. Then we can... I think we'll conduct some experiments. And then I think I'll actually recharge some power. It's a good thing I did. Okay, so we still have two power left. And we went up to three heat, so we are going to have to do a manual data collection again. We have two turns remaining. Then we can do a manual or, or flyover course adjustment and a recharge. Yeah, I think we're we I think we're safe. All right, that worked. And ooh, a critical success! Nice. Uh, so we get an extra nav, which we actually needed uh, for the next round of. Um, of tasks. Now we don't need to worry about heat now. So we have the extra nav here, so we can just do a data transmission, and that gets us there. That gets us there. And then we can just recharge power twice. And we failed the data transmission, but we'll resist it, and all is good. We're going back home. Very nice. Good, gentle landing. And in come the boats. That boat's sinking. Alright. Milestone achieved. Orbital EVA first. 300 extra support. Very nice. And 669 science for five months. And we get a total of 2,280 support. That is awesome. And that's a lot of science. All right, you're going to recuperate for a few months, six months to be exact. We need to research something, and we're going to research the payload. We're going to research Apollo. All right, now, how many mission slots do we have? We have one, so we have the Solar Observatory, which the payload finishes in two months then we have mercury orbit where the payload finishes in one month and we can do one more mission crude moon landing no one has this research yet and for mercury we're planning the mission china has the science but they're not planned yet all right, Earth topography. It's challenging. It gives good support and good science. Let's plan that mission. And we'll go with the extra power. 211,000. We'll definitely go with the extra power, yeah, because it's a challenging mission, so we're going to need the extra power. All right, build that payload. So we have payloads being ready in one, two, and three months. And we are past the next tier of support. That's good. 
Extravehicular photography. Photographs taken by astronaut Rolf Rossi during a recent EVA has featured on the front pages of several newspapers. The spacewalks seem to have captured the public's imagination. Gained 300 support. Very nice. Okay. We have the Mariner 8 ready to go to Mercury. That's the sign of vehicle for that. We don't have anything signed that we can reuse. Uh, so we have the Delta K and we have the Agena. The payload is 2200. Why would I use anything but the Delta K for this? It's more reliable. It takes an extra month to build. That could be a reason, but it's not. And it's less than half price. Let's select the Delta K. And then we'll do the Atlas. 340,000 will be six months build time. Let's take a look at contractors. We haven't really looked at that. So contractors are third party uh, private uh, companies. Uh, that will build the parts for us and they can have different um, uh, traits that they give. So Messier Aerospace here will give us an extra 10% launch reliability, but it'll also make the construction time take 25% longer. So instead of six months, it'll take eight. Green Moon will give us extra support, 25% extra support, but our payload reliability will go down by 10%. So I think United Space Nerds will build this ourselves. Uh, and I think we're going to save this design. We'll call it Light in the planets confirm save to sign save to sign and then we'll rename it because that's not gonna, obviously not going to be the name of the vehicle it's going to be a heat sink because we're going to mercury within this and it's hot up there it's hot up there all right six months 650 grand build it so that's our three mission slots next month solar observatory com payload is complete minus 50% builder cost uh, booster build cost and plus 50% booster build time. That sucks. But it's okay. It's okay. Can we reuse? We could reuse that, but I think we can do cheaper, can't we? Our first stage, yeah, we can, because we can do the Ariane 1, which also only takes two months to build. We could even go with the Star 37, which is even cheaper. But it's also incredibly unreliable unreliable. Let's select it for now and see what kind of reliability we get. So Atlas uh, Can we even go with We could go with the Ariane one. That gives us a terrible, terrible launch reliability. We'll go with the Atlas, and we're not going with the Star, because look at that launch reliability, 45%. If we go with the Ariane 1, we are up to 57%. So here we have a launch reliability of 80%. For the Atlas, we have a launch reliability of 80%. Why is the reliability only 57%? I don't get it. Ah, experimental fuel. It's because of the experimental fuel. Minus 
All right, confirm. 300 grand, six months. And next month. Earth topography payload complete. Let's design that vehicle, no effects. Um, wait, load design. No. Because we can do the same build as we did there, so 82% launch reliability. If we use the Arianians instead, we have 70% launch reliability. We save 150,000 and it takes the same time. We're gonna go with the Ariani. And we're going to save this design. Uh, we're going to rename the design to Ariani 1 and save it. And then we're going to rename the rocket to Bob. Bob is our rocket. Confirm. Build that vehicle. Four months build time. So we just spent a lot of money uh, building uh, rockets around, around what one and a half million we spent in the last three months building rockets. That's a lot of money. Next month, uh, budget review, 4,493 we did in the last year. That's pretty darn good. We're up to 357,000 per month. That's very good. Tier 9, and there's a long way to go up to tier 10. But if we have a year like last year, then uh, we're golden. So what was this? China is launching multi-crew orbit in 13 months. Japan completed Mars flyby. NASA completed Mars flyby. Okay. As long as you're not landing on the moon. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Alright, next month. And next month, and that almost completes Apollo. We're down to 210 science a month, though. Which sucks. Payload component issue. Your engineers have discovered a manufacturing error in a key component of the Maria 8 payload for your upcoming Mercury orbit mission. They estimate a 10% reduction to payload reliability, which is currently 80%, unless you commit funds to replacing the part. Hmm. This is an important mission. But it's just the payload reliability, and it's already 80%, so it'll just go down to 70%, and it's 250,000. No, we're going to leave component as it is. All right, Mercury orbit vehicle complete. Increased frequency of suboptimal launch windows. Hmm less penalty for them. That's a cool rocket. That's a cool rocket. I like it. Uh, Earth topography vehicle. Alright, so let's prepare for the Earth topography. We want science rewards. Science mission training bonus increased by 100%, so definitely science rewards. And I think we'll go in July, get 30% boost. I'm still not sure that it's worth it, waiting for those extra 20%, because we could just finish the mission and start building a new one. But we are going to launch in July, leave August as a backup launch window. Yeah. Confirm. And then we have Mercury, which we need to... Get ready as well. We are definitely doing science here too. 
And wow, there are not many good launch windows there, but July is a good launch window, so we'll launch that in July as well. All right, so in three months, months, my, I can't speak today, uh, launch Mercury and Earth topography free in three months. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, let's move on to the next month and the Mayflower will be complete. Solar Observatory vehicle complete. It looks very much like the other rocket. Uh, launch preparations. Uh, we'll do science, of course. No, our launch reliability is not great. And we'll go in June. Or will we? Let's go in August. We can always push it to December. It doesn't really matter that much with this mission. Get the extra science. I'm not sure that it's worth it. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's worth waiting? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Alright, next month that will complete Apollo. And we can go ahead and start researching one of the Saturns. So, an early heavy lift rocket capable of launching every large, very large payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. And the Saturn V, a massively powerful super heavy lift ro liquid fuel rocket designed to place very large payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. Hmm. <clears throat> Build time for the 1B is 9 months, the, the 5 is 11 months, and the 1B is a little bit cheaper. The launch reliability is better for the Saturn V though. The Saturn 1B is cheaper in science, it costs 800 science to research. The Saturn V costs 1200 science to research. Now. Saturn 2 upper stage. Takes six months, costs 637,000. The Saturn 4B takes five months to build, costs 425,000, so it's cheaper. I think we'll go with the 1B and the 4B. Go. So, the 5 and 2 would give us much more launch reliability, and I really don't want to blow up on this one. You know what, let's go with Saturn 5 and the Saturn 2. Yeah. Next month, and we are launching Mercury and Earth topography next month. Okay. 80% launch reliability, 70% payload reliability, and almost 3,000 science. This will be a good mission. Here we have 70 percent launch 65 percent payload and almost three thousand three thousand science another good mission all right this is earth topography and it's bob that's going up in july of 1968 conditions are good six percent Boom failure or boom risk. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go, Bob. Go, Bob. You can do it. You can 
do it, Bob. I have faith in you. Go, Bob, go. All right. Bob is in space. Very nice. And we had a critical success. Nice. Strong comms. Plus one comms on first missed task in mission. Nice. And the Ariane booster gets a little bit more reliable, which is a good thing. Okay, five, three, and two. This is a challenging mission. So ten, six, and four. So it's really nice that we got the, uh, the one comms from the get go. I still think we'll do a visual spectrum sampling. Then we'll do. Uh, flyover course adjustment and we'll do a data transmission yeah that seems good to me confirm nice an extra nav right off the bat and flyover course adjustment is fairly successful as well but it is successful and the data transmission is successful too all right, so we're to at four, three, and one. Good start. Good start. Okay. Let's do an orbital realignment. And then an infrared mapping. And then another data transmission. That takes us to eight and four. All right, all right, we'll resist this. The orbital realignment didn't go so well, so we need to correct it. And the infrared mapping went without a hitch and the data transmission was successful as well. All right, now it's the last turn, Jesus. We won't be able to get this, will we? Orbital realignment. Then we can do infrared mapping and ground control. That won't get it for us. We won't be able to get our bonus. I think this is the first time we don't get our bonus. That kind of sucks. What if we do an external sensor alignment, then do a data transmission? We can't get it. I don't think we can get it. We can't get it. What if we do everything power? So a signal return test. A visual spectrum sampling. And an orbital realignment. So we still don't get our bonus. Damn it. I guess we'll have to live with that. I guess we'll have to live with that. Alright. And signal return test sucked. So did our visual spectrum sampling. Now we're not going to resist that uh, because we are good, so we'll accept it. 
because we wouldn't have been able to resist the orbital realignment if that had failed, and then we would have failed entirely. Well, that sucked. That sucked. That's the first time we haven't done the bonus, I think. What a bonus. Well, it's still good support and good science. 492 science for six months. So let's do Mercury. Actually, you know what? Well, you know what I want to do? I want to start planning the crude moon landing. Yes, I do. We'll do the extra astronaut, so we have four crew capacity. It'll make it a bit more expensive, but that's okay. Standard, we have three crew and it costs 564,000. With the extra crew, we have four crew and costs 705,000. I'll, I'll take that uh, extra uh, crew. Did I select that? Yeah. 705,000. Six months. That will be ready. We are planning our crude moon landing and no one even has the research for it. We are definitely going to be first to land on the moon. All right. Let's do Mercury Orbit. Ooh, that looks bad. That looks bad. I think we'll wait a month. I think we'll wait a month on that. Because August was a optimal launch window as well, I think. Terrible conditions. I wish I knew for a fact if August was an optimal window. We're rescheduling. We're rescheduling. It's not November is. Right, but no one else is anywhere near us. I mean, China has the science, but they haven't even started planning the mission. So we'll go in November instead, confirm mission setup next month solar observatory with the experimental fuel terrible launch reliability not so great payload reliability but great science okay the mayflower august 1968 Eleven percent chance of going boom. Three, two, one. Don't go boom. Ignition, lift off. Cleared the tower. Go, Mayflower, go. Don't go boom. Don't go boom. Don't go boom. Don't go boom. Thank you. All right, Mayflower is in space, just barely though. Uh, one random command is lost from a module on first turn of first task, okay. Very, very reliable rockets we have there. All right, achieve Earth orbit. And we need six of each. Okay, so we can't do the flyover course adjustment. That's the penalty that we got for for that um, little mishap during launch. That's fine. And it's only on the first turn that we can't do it. So it, it's really not a problem. We'll do a visual spectrum sampling.
Then we'll do ground control connection and infrared mapping. Yeah. Confirm. Alright. Visual spectrum sampling went well. Ground control connection is strong. And the infrared mapping is infrared. Fantastic. Okay. Hmm. We have three turns remaining. Let's do another ground control connection. Then we'll do an external sensor alignment. And an infrared mapping. Yeah, that seems good to me. Ooh, ground control connection is failing. We'll resist it. We have the power. External sensor alignment is all good. And so is the infrared mapping. All right, so now we can do... Either we can do the ground control connection or we can do two orbital realignments. I think we're going to do two orbital realignments. And then we're going to do a data transmission. That gives us 555. That means we just need one of each in the last turn. Can we get that? We definitely can get that. We can just do three, six, three of those, but that won't be necessary, I think. Yeah, we can definitely get one of each on the last one. Resist that. Orbital realignment is good. And so is the data transmission. All right, so one, one, one. Now, if we do this and this, that'll work. And then we can do a flyover course adjustment, and then we're home. Bonus achieved. We're, and we have three power, so we can resist three times. So that's good, resist. Ground control connection, all good. And flyover course adjustment is successful. Nice! That's a lot of science that we're getting there. <clears throat> Around 4,500 science. So, 600 support, 738 science for six months. I like it. We're getting 1,440 science a month right now. That is awesome. All right, we're launching Mercury Orbit in three months. The Apollo completes in five months. All right, Saturn V is ready, which means that we can do the Saturn II. It is the Saturn II that we want to do, right? Yeah. All right, next month. Saturn II research complete. Now, what do we want to research next? What is our next goal? I think I want to do the commercial satellite. Now... Space Station Mars Lander... Jupiter and Saturn flyby. There's so many more missions. It's wonderful. I love it. All right. So yeah, I, I think we're going to do a commercial satellite. Because this commercial satellite is nice. It gives us 3,500 funds. And once we built this thing completely, we'll be basically be out of funds. So we could use the cash injection. So I think we will do the commercial satellite next. 
All right. China instrument request. China have manufactured, have requested that a scientific instrument manufactured by their agency be added to your Apollo payload, which is being constructed for your crewed moon landing mission. They have offered 500,000 towards mission costs in exchange. Your engineers believe they can install the instrument without any detriment to their mission objectives, though have noted that China will gain science from the mission. No. I'd like the money, but China can't have science. So, all right, Mercury orbit mission is a go, but we are out of time. So we'll have to launch Mercury orbit in the next one. We'll have to launch in the next one. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.